Good morning, all of you. Am I, aud am I audible till the last? Yeah, raise your hands if I'm audible till the last. Okay, that's great. First of all, I don't know where Odisha lies in India's map. I'm so sorry. Because first time I'm coming to Odisha. Okay. So he has introduced me very well. I'm Dr. Manoj Chaudhary, and I'm not a robot. Okay. Working in robotics from past 10 years may, might not have made me a half robot, but yeah, half mine is working like a robot every time. But I want to be like a dolphin, okay. like shifting my brain all the time. So my talk is going to include artificial intelligence and how we can say hello world and say how you can use this in your whole life. Every time people are asking me, what is this, what is this? But I will tell you in live what is going to happen and how you see the future and how AI can ch change everything. It's a feature or it's a product or it's a platform learning base. So let's just give me like two minutes more. We spend so much of our lives driving from place to place. I'm just gonna stop. Just right here. Yes, save us a seat. Shouldn't it be easier and safer to get where we want to go? Since 2009, our team at Google has been developing fully self-driving technology and testing it on real city streets every single day until after more than a million miles, we were ready to take a big step forward. In 2015, we completed the world's first truly driverless ride on public roads. Just a person in a car, no steering wheel, no pedals, navigating everyday traffic. Well, I've never been in Austin, Texas. Now I'm driving in Austin, Texas. It's a profound experience for me to be alone in a car. A very important segment of my life was cut away when my vision failed. And a self-driving car would give me a huge part of my life back. This is just the beginning. We're looking ahead to a new way, a better way for everyone. Say hello to Waymo. So basically it is Waymo, Google's driverless car, where I worked out. And I work every day nowadays on this. And December in Luxembourg, we are going to launch up the taxis, which is going to you going to get the ride. And I hope this is going to be the perfect ride for you, all of all of us. So I will tell you one experience. Might be this is related to AI. So I was in California, so I was sitting down inside first time trying for the Waymo. And do you know it was? I was so happy and excited when I was sit, like opening the door. When I sat down, putting a seal bell, I was afraid and scared. Like it was a scary ride for me for the few hundred meters. There was no like steering movement. There was no pedal. There was nothing like that. And I was just like, okay, let's ride, let's ride, let's ride. After some time, it made me happy. Okay, I'm not the one who's going to control it. If how some, something goes wrong also, I cannot do anything. So that was the scariest part. Otherwise, there's true happiness that you don't have to do anything or you don't have to worry about any part. And it makes you, okay, make your life comfortable. So many people are trying it and we have run out 10, more than 10,000 miles for this AI driverless car. And it's a perfect example of AI and machine learning, which I feel like this is going to be in the nowadays. India is also trying to come out with AI travel, means a driverless car with the Tata, but still we are lagging behind because of the safety standards and you know the road conditions. So we are, we are going to come down, but still we are like lagging behind somewhere. So welcome to our hello world of artificial intelligence. And I know everybody is curious about what is AI and how it is benefiting, how people are able to use it, and what is driving this force ahead in order just for the future, and how people see the future with AI. First of all, how, for me, the future is, imagine a company which is having 30,000 employees, and the company is having the biometric system for the attendance. Now let's talk about if somehow some, some, something get hacked up or something get, went wrong with the biometrics, because there is a lot of fraud attendance system which happens. But at the next moment, why not utilize the resources not putting up the extra hardware? Why not utilize the cameras and ask the camera to do the attendance system for you? Why not to make up like something using the computer vision and make the 
camera has enough smart in order to give the access to the person who is, a, who is the right owner for it. Because 30,000 employees, and I'm talking about three things at the same time. The data of 30,000 employees, it should be put in up the right hand. And I'm talking about a camera which is going to be enough smart in order to take up a decision at the right time. And I'm talking about the gate which is going to get open after that thing is going to be done. But these three things are not the, enough for me. Because when it comes for entering in the, inside a building, which is full of smart security, smart systems. That is something different. Because suppose today I'm having beard. Like, yeah, I'm having a beard. But after some time, suppose if I'm just going to replace it, is the system going to allow me? Like, iPhone is the best example for it. People are trying to test it with different, different things. Might be, but that is a perfect example. How is this going to be making these things easier for a person who's going to make it? So that remains a question mark for me also. Like, how it is AI going to help them, how help us out? So we are going to see in the further. But what makes it intelligent? Artificial intelligence. Intelligence is the word which is given to so many people and so many things, but why a machine is going to be intelligent? Because we are only creating the machine. So how it is going to be intelligent? And how it is going to be enough intelligent to make up a decision on its own? That's what the question is. So basically, in my section, I'm going to contain what is AI, and what is the history, how it started up, and what is the traits of AI, and how the perfect approach is for AI, and how the evaluation process, because the point is, how all of you knows AI. Okay, if I'm not wrong, so raise your hands. How many of you know about AI? Artificial intelligence. So I have a pretty much number. But how to implement it, how to use every day, how to make the things in a better, like, I want to see a better world with AI, by corporations, by coordination. But how you see a better world, that's a different phenomena for me. So like, how to implement it, that's the right path. So implementation, we are going to learn today. So basically, prediction is the only phase which I'm going to tell you at the last, and how the application have been used. And I'm going to do my demonstration, which I have made, like a chatbot today. I will show you that how chatbots are helping out the autism patients, and more than that, the people for the last server end, or just like a client side, they're helping them out. Because so many companies are using the chatbot system in the, right now, and the banking solutions are taking that advantage. So definition. So by the way, like for me also, a machine which is intelligent or just like, I can say the textbook says the study or design of intelligent machines is artificial intelligence. So do you think so your phones are artificially intelligent? Or your car is artificially intelligent? Or if the mixer juicer you are using at your home is artificially intelligent? Or a robot, cleaning robot is artificial intelligent robot? So that definitions never suit to anything like, Okay, your printer is a smart printer, but it takes up a decision when you print up and put up a command. So yesterday somebody was asking me a question, that was true. Like, for everything, you need, first of all, the algorithm for it to define. Okay, this is the thing which is going to be defined up. But that's true, like, for anything. Like, if I need a data set for everything. Like, if I want to make up the entries for this, and I want to evaluate how many people want to learn AI, then I need a data set of everyone. But is there any method I can train up, okay, this is the way I'm going to do it? No. There will be different answers for it because the machine which is intelligent needs to know how it is going to be intelligent. For intelligency, there is different reason and different aspects, and there is a different parameter which is going to come inside that. Now, history. And that is a beautiful thing. Everyone should know. In 1956, we have the field of research, AI, which was came in a conference. And who is the father? Yesterday, I forgot the name. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Somebody was asking me the, who is the father of AI. John McCarthy was the father of AI. I forgot the name, I should not forget. Okay. So he's the father of AI. And basically, people look for the future in 20 years. They don't want to replace anyone. AI doesn't want to replace anyone. If you think of replacement, then it's going to, it's going to be dangerous words, like replacements and all that. Because we are at the starting stage. It's a very basic and early stage of AI. And you can see a lot of changes happening up inside and outside. You see the customer satisfaction, customer level. Now you see that there is a smiley comes after you just say, thank you for your feedback. Your survey systems, they're all artificial intelligence systems, a machine learning system. Now you think of Amazon. He makes you feel so okay, like if you're buying something, the next search is going to be like related to that only. So that is called AI systems for you, okay? That is a perfect match for that. So it is helping you out more. And Facebook, you see, there is so much of advertisement, which I hate the most. But yeah, it comes what because I have searched from the past. I'm searching that kind of thing. 
So this is going to show me, if I'm searching on Amazon, also it's going to reflect back. Because that is a relation which I'm trying to do. That is coming up. That's called artificial intelligence customers. Customer service based. Few days back I was in Mumbai, somebody asked me, is AI going to help in the medical sector or robotics, because I'm a robotics guy. So robotics, AI in medical sectors. I will say like there are so many net mats. That is a perfect example for AI, which is trying to relate with that. Swiggy, nowadays you can track the real time delivery. You can track the bike which is sliding down. Okay, so it's going from one place to another. So it's a perfect example of real time using of AI. So there is different, different ways you can use up AI. So I see a future where you are working with a robot. In Gurugaon, there is an incident happened in the Maruti Suzuki factory. The person died with the robot because the robot was not able to identify it's a human or a, it's a machine. So there is no different difference for the large machine that this is AI, or this is a robot. So this is like, we need to know the perfect differences, how we can relate ourselves in this AI world, where this is a broad world. And you have a wide area to think of. And think of every way. First of all, AI is never a platform. It's a product. It's a feature you can use in your products. So in any application, in any area you want to relate, that's AI is a feature. It's, a, it's never a platform. So basically when I talk about Amazon, there is a product which is coming up in US for the database companies. There is one product which I will talk about is which we have made it out and we have launched it. We are going to launch it soon. So the first phase comes is if suppose if I'm having a client who is investing 100 crore rupees on the sales and that 100 crore rupees is going on the sales round. Okay, so they need to know in the past whatever the sales they have made for different parameters. Are they getting the profit out of that and which area they're getting the profit. So I was delivering an engine for them. In that engine, the 100 crore rupees is going to divide in such a sector from their three years past background data. In that background data, they will be checking up in which parameter they have made best of money out of that, or ROI, which they have got. Suppose there is 50 crore rupees they have invested in the cooking and utensils. So they will be getting ROI from that mainly, but they are not getting ROI from this clothing sector. So why to put up more money in clothing sector rather than using up in cooking and utensils? So that was the perfect shape which we tried to make it out. So that, suppose you want to buy, like I'm the guy who want to buy clothes online. So I, will, I should get the messages of clothes only. I should not get the message of any other extra things. But every time we get a discount of everything, okay, there is a message coming up, okay, you're getting a discount of 50% on that. But why we are getting that? Because our engine are not making us think, they are not thinking on that. Because they need to think. We need to make up an engine which needs to think and give the data to the appropriate users. You are the users for them. So that's why we are trying to build up an engine in such a way so that the engine can help the customers. And customers can know, okay, what is the real thing for them. Now the Amazon have started a store in US in which you enter and you're billing, there is no one, and after that you come inside, your bill is done. So it's some such of a smart system which is working. You go to Hotel Hinara in Japan, that is a fully ro automated robotics hotel, which is completely run by robots only, from the starting from the Reception till the last, your room services. There is no human. And the fees is quite normal, $75 for per night. So you can use it. It's a five star hotel. So now in this deduction, reasoning and problem solving. So basically people know like how this deduction and reasoning and problem solving helps out, like how it works in AI. Like there's few things which needs to be related up together. Your mathematics problem, if you are solving, like you see the calculations in Excel you do and you put up the whole line set of algorithms. And in that, how it works, it basically put, puts up a codes and it works out in the mainframes. You see that. But after that, what exactly is happening in AI, you just get up the platform and that platform is going to help you out in knowing some of the best feature for the calculations. But there is no such bot which has been done. AI was started because of the chess. How many of you play chess over here? So why it was started because of chess? The reason was there is number of prediction, number of probabilities of the next move which you can have. There's n number of probabilities for the chess. So chess was the only thing. Just give me. So chess was the thing which was started because of this reason. We should say AI was the thing which was started. Okay, let's try chess, and I will show you the example how the chess worked out. Okay, let's have. Let's hear something more from the demo today. Okay, okay. This mic is working. How many of you know about beatboxing? 
Play beatboxing for me. Okay, put your hands together for MC sound file. Flip a coin. Sure. Tails. It's tails. So, this is basically a very basic example I've shown you of my own chatbot. This is not a Google chatbot. Google Assistant you have seen. And Siri you have seen. So it's basically my own chatbot which I've created for myself in order to know what is happening around me and if I'm traveling tomorrow, then I should get the updates. And if I'm traveling to Odisha, what is the temperature? And what is the temperature going to happen for seven days? So for autism patients. So autism patients basically are those patients which is uh, out of the society. So for them, they don't talk with the people much, but they talk with this, this like technology. So for the technology sites, what we planned of was making up a chatbot and in order to know about the chatbot in MIT, Health Institute, US, they are working on the teddy bears. Teddy bears is not basically the teddy bears, but the robotic teddy bear, where they can talk with the teddy bears all the time. That's what is happening all around the globe. Okay, for if if I can I get, can I get a volunteer on the stage? Anyone from the audience? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's a mind fire person. <laughs> I feel the new. Okay, I want you to just do the demo of whatever the question you have. Okay. Let's say I love you first. <laughs> okay. Say I love you. I love you. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I will say. I will, sh I will show you. I love you. Aw, thanks. Anything I can help you with? Okay, you now you know it's your turn. Okay. okay. My answer is zero. So I have to say. Yeah, you have to say. Okay. I love you. Really? Wow. It feels good to be loved. Okay, so now you can say anything. What's your name? My name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait. So, can you tell me like my friend love you a lot? Do you want to marry with her? Marry marry with him? It's his questions. I should not be like making questions because it will be easy for him. Okay. So tell your name. Here are some results from a search. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is the weather in Odisha? Currently in Bhubaneswar it's 77 with haze. It will be partly cloudy there with a forecast high of 85 and a low of 64. Can you switch on my Wi-Fi? Oh. Here is a matching video. <laughs> so might be she's not loving me anymore today. <laughs> so it's your question turn. You tell your name. Okay. My name is Abhijit. You'd like me to call you Earl. Is that right? No. Sorry about that. To change your name, just go to settings. <laughs> Okay, I, I will show you. She loves me a lot. <laughs> okay, my name is Manoj Chaudhary. Sorry. These pictures should match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So basically, it is an interactive thing, which makes your life so interactive so that you can talk with the chatbots. So might be some things are wrong. Okay, I'm sorry for that, but it's, it's, it's basically completely usual. Like AI chatbots are like that. It makes funny, it makes, but the process which is running behind is not to in order to just make things everything correct, but in order to have a conversation with you. Like in order to have like real time interactions. Suppose you are the customer, you have taken something. You should not be like filling up the forms. There should be someone, okay, are you happy with the service? Or are you ha not happy with the service? There should be smiley, there should be something. That's what the customer's interaction works out in AI. That's what the thing is. So you see this cybernetics and brain simulations. Symbolic, sub-symbolic, statical, and in, means to say the integrating the approaches together. So when I talk about the new, people ask me, machine learning is a subset of AI, and how it is related together. You train the machine, you have thousands of data, you have 10 number of data, but how you're training the machine, 
that is important. Now, I will, I will show you why I have asked this person to come on the stage. I was trying to train him how to talk with this. So I was, I, I was not feeding you any data. I was just asking you to, means I was just training you. Because that is a perfect example. You train a baby in order to teach, okay, that's a walk. That's you have to take up the next step. So that's how an AIU works out. It's not about coding, it's about more over how you want to see like in a decision making power. Suppose if there is a fire in front of me and I want to remove my hand, I know the static decision, but AI doesn't know. That's where the fails are because instant decision makings are never there. You, you have like a power, humans have the more power. That's why I say after 20 years or 40 years also, you cannot, AI cannot be replaced up. So that's what the point is. That's the base tra basic training set examples. So how you re relate up the symbolic and non-symbolic things together. That's what the things lies. So when we talk about the driverless car also, first phase was never to make up a driverless car. First phase was to read out the whole scenario. Now the Google car can able to read up the two football fields together. It can see the per person who's standing over there and how it is behaving. Everything can be seen. So that's what we train it. We train that the bumpers are there. Do you know Dual Travelist car caught, was caught for 21 accidents on his name? But we somehow would like mislead the conversation because it was because of a human error. That was the problem. Okay, but moreover, there was a traffic jam which was happened for four hours. Why? Because it was driving like a nani. Now you understand what is nani. It was driving at a speed of 20 to 30. So that was the problem which happened it, and it got arrested. But why it was driving? Because it doesn't, it was not taught in order to have to change the lane. It was taught in order to move and follow the traffic rules. And if, like we humans in India, if I just talk about Indian terms, okay? So we know how to just make out a car from overtake also, how to take an overtake. But the car also knows, but it knows the certain rules and values it has, like ethical values. It carries an AI in this car. That's where the things that we put up the all logics together in the system. So that's where the Indian things means to say, US and everyone is failing up in the technology. Like few day, few months back, the car got an accident, Tesla car, and the person died inside the car. So Tata's driverless car project got failed and they stopped it. Because Indian, first of all, need the safety standards. And AI basically is basically talking about the whole data sets. It's not about, okay, relating of the one road or relating of the lanes. So we need to define up. In driverless car was started in 2009 by Sebastian Thrun, because his friend died in a car and he won the first like unmanned aerial means a robotics championship in by means to say organized by DARPA. Because of that reason it was started up. So there was like, it is all like a fancy story which was there behind it. But the reason is to make the life secure and comfortable because we want to live in a better world. That's what the AI means to be. And in that there is an e-commerce line which is growing because of the AI in Paytm, it's growing because of the AI, because you are eventually gaining, gaining the customer supports. You're not gaining up like anything else. Customer support is the main support for that. So people just want to know like what kind of tools and all that. So search and optimization. Everyone have used this search and optimization tool, like Instagram also, anyway, like social platforms are the highest users. Like if you go for Gmail, there is inbox, there is so much of category, parameters have been divided for the search and optimization. So if I talk about the spams and everything, how they get related, that is a perfect example for machine learning. So that's all related with the search and optimization because you search up with a different, different set of parameters into it. That's where the relation comes in. And the input and the mediator. So there is different three things. Where you see the output of the input and there is a medium and there is a perfect output which comes out. And there is one logic behind it. If I say like you go to shop, like do the shopping, offline and online, and if you go for online shopping, you get like search, and then after one search only, like you see about the Google's search engine, you type one word. Why it is running fast, fastly and why it is at the top? Because you search, like you type one word. It gives you multiple results in few seconds, not seconds also, nanoseconds, it comes out. And that's where, the AI needs to be done. Like you just need to have the perfect database for it. It is creating a database. So database is the only key to succeed in any kind of world. And I hope you all people are from database only. And you know the value of data more than me. Yeah, because I'm not a secured guy. So that's what the problem is. So everywhere the search and optimization is the most important tool which is used up in the prediction basis. Okay, I have made up machine, I have made up one algorithm for the machine, breast cancer patients. Machine learning algorithm for breast cancer patients. Do you know that these patients only need two types of medicines? But 
for getting those two type of medicines, the doctor has to undergo for several number of procedures. And it has to be like a costly solution and doctor has to bear the pain for it. And person who is having this has to bear a lot of pain and money. So in order to reduce that efforts, we go on with the cert, I have made up an engine in which the doctor has to put up the genes and in that genes, the, med, in the search engine is going to tell you which type of medicine you have to use. And it is going to give the accuracy of 78% to 82%. And gemcetabine and septabine is the two medicines which are used for the machine learning, means to say, for the breast cancer patients. And 78% to 82% accuracy is the good accuracy which has been defined and is, you are going to use, it means you're going to see in the AIMS hospital is going to come down soon in February. We are going to launch this engine together with the AIMS hospital collaboration. That's what the thing is happening. That's what we are trying to come up because in medical sector, if you see there is a number of operation goes with the robots, but it's not with the robots. It's with an engine which needs to be developed in order to reduce some procedures. Like NetMeds created, created an application where they are making, making up doctors and the medicines together and linking up everything, but they are using up the doctor's data. So that's why they, they didn't work out. They have only 50,000 customers but they are making money because they know the value of that data of 50,000 doctors. That's what they are trying to come out with. That's where they are leading to. So AI is having a perfect number of uses and e-commerce if you talk about, if you talk about medical sector, if you talk about the automation sectors where you can make the machines to know that you, this is a human and this is a basic difference between a machine. So difference, differentiation between the human and machines is the most important thing in automobile or at automation sectors, which is going to be helped in the future. So there is perfect logical now, neural networks, so that is like offensive word also, like, so uh, that is not a hype and a buzz word, neural networks. Basically, I can probably say like about examples of neural networks or might be because nobody have used till now the neural networks. How many have you seen Inception? Everyone is aware about Inception, that's great. So inception in that you had a two, three dreams, like person is entering inside the dreams and they are just looking for the logics. Okay, this is the dream we have to create. So how many of you think that you can complete your dreams? If you've seen one dream today, today, tomorrow can you complete it? How many of you die in your dreams? I die every day in a shock and I woke up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning, to, okay, I'm alive to check myself. Because without dying, because if you're in a deep sleep for four hours, you cannot make yourself alive. That's what the point is. So neural network, basically, if I talk about the sleeping or the brain sense, is totally different term than AI. Okay, but they are both interrelated together. So when we say interrelated together, there is a cross which comes for them, and like a machine learning. Machine learning, AI, and neural network, they all are related because there's a subset which is going on and which people are trying to learn all the time. There's moving on and this growing fastly. But they all are related and interrelated in the future. Microsoft provides a Azure Studio for the machine learning. And there's a perfect base if you all are looking for how to train and how to do that algorithm. It's a Microsoft, Azure is the best studio right now. Basic studio for all of you. If you can think of making up something in the train sets and you want to train some models, you can do that using of the application for billing accounts or in Dubai, 3,000 people have been fired from the hotel industry because of the reason, because they don't know like how they can make up, make, update themselves with the use of AI. That's what the problem is. So if you, people are looking forward for the good jobs or something like that in the future, they should be updating themselves with the AI or with the machine learning so that they can know what their value is. Apart from coding and all that, you should relate these things together in order to have a better future. Broad classes of, see, can somebody make up this AC a little bit low? Sorry, hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry because I'm feeling cold as standing up. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm so sorry. So, oh, I think so, Bhuvneshwar is a hot place. <laughs> and people are hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the problem is with me. <laughs> so that's why I need an AI system for this so that we can have like a, if a person is feeling cold, it should automatically be just like making it higher, like the temperature should rise. That's what the real time application comes up for the AI. I think that is going to be the perfect base example for it. 
So for me, now I will just only say like, somebody can come and read for me. <laughs> I can explain them. Can somebody come? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> just read out for me. In 1950, Alan Turing proposed a general procedure to test the intelligence of an agent known as Turing test. The broad classes of outcome for an AI test are optimal, strong superhuman, superhuman, and subhuman. Yeah. Now, I call you up in order to speak for me. Okay. okay. What was the thing? So, in which category I should divide you? Like, I was training you or I was asking you to do something? Uh, you asked me to do something. Yeah, that's what the point is. So that's what the relation comes up. So basically I asked him to do something and he, and he did something for me. And that is called, I'm not training him. That's what the data which I have feed in order to ask him for the command, okay, please read out for me. So he got a command and he's just doing that. But it's not intelligent. Because he's doing some kind of repetitive work which anybody can do it. But you need to make up the machine intelligent. Okay, if I'm some, having something, then the person should read out for me. The person should not read out for me. I'm so sorry. I just, it was just no, explanation. Way, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, I can read out. <laughs> so, it was just explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, in 1950, Alan Turing just did a general procedure test. And in that, he was dividing up the people into different, different set of categories. Okay, these are the, uh, sir, yesterday you was asking me, like, that was a, how he divided up people. Yesterday we were having a long discussion. That is, that is a nice thing which I, yesterday I did this slide. I was not adding this slide at all. That's true, like how we can add up some fancy words because yesterday sir asked me like, we can add up some different, different categories, super, superhuman, human, human, because these are all, all different categories because I'm not able to see the emotion or the anything like that in the human, but how can a machine do it? Because it is using the, all the database for me. It is using up the number, okay, if I have some parameters, okay, for the general IQ test also, there is some parameters and a test is given. So in order that, we can only evaluate the IQ of the person. But how to classify that thing, that is still in a different phases. That's why we say it is at the early stage where we are just only recognizing the partial values of AI and ML. So for making it more effective and intelligent, we need to work out more and more every day in order to know, okay, this is the AI and this is, this is the basic thing which I can add up in the future. This is the thing which I, so how many of you are for software code developers, hard de code developers? You all people, just, there's one thing. In AI, you don't need to do that much of code in order to teach a machine. You only need to just make it an algorithm or just a line, simple line of code, so that it can be executed properly. Or it can be executed in order to just reach out to the, like, test of your codes. Basically, you don't, for testing up right now, we just run up the whole code and there is an error which is coming out, out of 8,000 lines of code. But in order to check that, we need to make up an engine in order to check up the whole code. For that engine also, we need to do the coding. So what is the difference between the engine and what is the difference between these kind of codes which is happening? That's what the problem lies. So that's what I want to mean to say. I'm going to leave on you only today. Thank you. I can go. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So all of you have seen movies, by the way, like AI is a fictional Star Trek, sir has explained, like CEO, sir, CEO, Chinmay sort of explained that science fiction movies are getting real nowadays. People are making Iron Man hands and Iron Man suits. In India also people have made Iron Man suits. So AI is no more a fiction or a science fiction which in movies you see like a face recognition which is happening in the iPhone X or a, like a Google Assistant which is telling you which photo has been taken at which place, like a link place. So it is all happening in real time. So robotics, that's my domain. And Robocop was the only movie which made me surprised how they made the robot in so intelligent and so smart. And Terminator is also a movie where they made the robot and a human together combination. So basically in the real time application, if I say the robots for Honda Asimo, perfect example of AI of creation of 20 years. It took 20 years for the Honda company to make and such an achievable robot. It is run by fuel and it has a smart decision making ability. It can walk on the stairs, climb on the stairs, can jump on its one feet. It can talk to eight humans at one time with the different languages. And it can respond to any question and it can detect a human as a human and a robot as a robot. So that is the basic difference which they are teaching to a robot. They're not saying it's not a public market, but they are saying it's a technology which is going to be used in the future. Because the moment you differentiate between a robot and a human, that's where you achieve a line of track and a line of success track. 
track which you are looking forward for that. So that's where the AI is going to be like, not a science fiction, but a tool which is going to be used by everyone in this way. You all like e-commerce coders and everyone can relate themselves and come out of the same platform and can work together. Because it's an integrity and a combination topic. It's not a simple like one way person is doing, trying to do that. So here is Asimo. It was when I just met Honda Asimo first time, it was, I was thinking it's a blade means it's a steel kind of body or carbon fiber kind of body, it's a robot, but no. It's more than a robot, it's a human. You can live in the environment, but what the problem which is the robots is in this life, they cannot, they can never think of, okay, this is, this is the human and I have to shake a hand with him and I have to greet it. That's what the problem with the robots is. Because they can differentiate as an object and a means to say human, but they can ne never just like greet you. You have seen this robot one movie. So basically it was too much fiction and it was, it, it is not, go, not going to happen like this, but honestly, the falling in love is a kind of thing which was shown like emotional generation. And that is where we are lacking. If we are going to put up emotions or kind of generate something like that, it's going to take up a blast. That is going to be the next level of achievement for us. And suppose if you are just a happy customer for something, that's going to make you a smile happy. Bring a smile on everyone's face. That was the initiative which was taken by an AI startup in US that is collecting data for the customers, two million customers for the online platforms. So that's why, that's what is happening around the globe. Kismet, it was a MIT's based robot. Basically this robot can check your smile and after that it's going to smile. It, it looks weird, but it smiles back, it reflects back. It, if you're crying also, it will just gen means to say check your emotions and it will make the eyes, not the tears, because it cannot never have tears, but yeah, it will make this means the eyes sad. So basically this is an emotion generated robot, which was developed in MIT Personal Robotics Lab. So this is basically a robot which is licking up and checking up, okay, emotions stability and human stability has both means in robots there is no emotion stability which I talked earlier. So that's what the Kismet is trying to do. And that is a perfect example of generating emotions and how you generate emotions, that where you teach, and how you teach every day. My final, like, you all are B.Tech engineers. Am I correct? Yeah, so I was never a B.Tech engineer. I never got a chance to do it. But I was also having to submit a final year project. So what I did my final year project was, I was teaching a hand, like, how to hold an egg and tomato, with a different, four times I was teaching a, means to say, robot, to hold an egg in a different formation, because holding an egg and a tomato is two different faces. Okay, this is two different types which I was checking, checking up. So if I'm holding an egg like this for four times, so my robot will know that the, how much amount of pressure and how much amount of like energy I have to put on this egg and how much amount of, means to say, put up energy on the tomato. So this was two different links which I was generating and, the, and I was able to get the amount of accuracy, but I have broken like 13 eggs also. Because at the first hand, when you try to train a machine, it basically makes some, so many mistakes because after that it learns. Because if you play a chess with a, robot, AI robot, then you will automatically be winning a thousand times, but one thousand times you will not be able to make, means to say, make that machine lose, because it is learning from your own codes, it is learning from your own moves, whatever the next move is, it's going to learn. So that's what we call it train sets. Suppose if I don't know how to play chess, well, the next move is going to be like, okay, let's, I will just play and I will just start playing, because after a thousand times I will also learn. So that's what the machine is capable of enough of learning next to next move. Okay, this is a startup which just came up, which came up in tech, disturbed Berlin right now. So it is basically a French chair. In that French chair, you have seen Stephen Hawking's. So it is kind of a, that smart chair where the person can sit and it can take bath also in that and it can do a dis means to say disabled person. And it can have like emotions, whatever the brain is working, it is going to show up on the screen and it's going to reflect back the voice which is going to come and means to say the vibrations is coming, it is going to convert in the voices and it's going to just like, or you can just make up the writing also. So that is a startup which came for the disabled persons. But that's not going to work out because the point is in a startup or in any kind of disabled person, they will not like, it's a research and development phase. So for working up anything, we need to have a sustainability and scalability. If you talk about 35% of disability persons on the, sorry, 13.5% of disability persons in the whole world, 
then I will say like, you cannot have like 5% of customers for this. You cannot generate, because for research and development, everything sounds fancy. And for technology people, it sounds like, okay, that is a wow thing which somebody has done. But apart from that, if I talk about, okay, it's not gonna work out. Because suppose if you create something for me, like a humanoid robot, which I created, but I don't have any customer for it. I'm honestly saying, I created a humanoid robot in 2012. But what is the use and application, end user application for it? It's for entertainment purposes. Asimo is creating everything, but why it is creating everything? Why it is, because they want to have, adopt the technology phase of it. They don't want to sell the robot out of the box for everyone. If you check out the computer vision, it can talk to eight people at the same time. Think of that, the voice, the speech to text. Everything is so perfect that they want to use that thing in other places. That's where the application lies. The robot which I made can talk into four languages, but it cannot talk at the same time. So there was some problem. But that's why I don't have the paid customers for it. So it was like a fancy thing. Yesterday I was trying to carry, but somehow in India, like not in India, but with me, the problem is I didn't pay the tax for it. So I have to suffer the loss. So this was Deep Blue and Gary Kasparov. The first time, the chess. So it looks like this only. There's a machine which played chess against them at that moment. If Somebody remembers that. So this was something different, which when I started learning it. So chess, so remember chess was the, chess is equal to AI, and AI is equal to chess. And for machine learning, remember which my technology, brain, this means to say, breast cancer patient technology, remember my technology, okay? I'm not forcing, just kidding. So for me, like, I will end up like soon. But I'm ending up with one conclusion for everyone. AI is the better tool to use for future and to look for future as a coordination between humans and robots or humans and the machines. And to learn from the machines or to tease the machines is the basic idea and principle of it. So all of you are looking forward for the future in AI and machine learning. It's the best platform and number of applications and still emerging phase and try to implement it as much as you can and learn it every day and put up in the right application source and do as much as coding you can do for it and try to gather data and extract from it as everyone is applying the data forms and everyone is using the sets. So this will be like a perfect place for you. Like, first of all, Tech Bhuvanesh is amazing because they have the second round. So I don't find subjective places. And this is amazing crowd and amazing AI people. I can, I'm gonna find like, I have some amazing AI people who's sitting there and I have a lot of energy. So I will say like, have a blast, learn AI, make, break, and create something which is useful for the society. Not fancy, because useful ideas are welcomed, but entertaining ideas loves, leaves for some time, but they leave, okay? So love the entertainment, but leave the entertainment, come for the useful time, that is AI, okay? It's a better future and better society. And I'll leave a question session, means a question answer around for everyone. It's open. Anybody has any question, any doubt, any future prediction, so. Uh, actually, uh, uh, frankly speaking, in human, uh, human and machine interaction, there are many much uh, kind of things that are going on. And when we think of human intelligence to be replaced by AI intelligence, what kind of precautions we should take as a forum like uh, Tech Bhubaneswar people should know? Thank you. Yeah, sure. That, is, that, that question might be I missed up in my talk, okay? That is a nice question, which I should include. First of all, how many of you heard of the Facebook, Facebook shut down their AI? Uh, everyone knows about how, why they shut down their AI. There is a reason. When they were talking with each other, there was a, they say that they have developed some language kind of like, hey, hey, well, they were developing some kind of language. But never, Facebook never thought of it because they made a beautiful video for their home and everything. But apart from that, when it come to the real time or real grounds, it became zero. That's why they shut down their project. Microsoft also had a blast because blast means that they all, their project also got failed because See, for the precaution side, I always prefer, there is rules and n number of rules for it, for generating something. When you talk of making of something in e-commerce, when you t never leave your data open space for anyone, first of all. Because when you t talk of open spaces, means you say your data is a more valuable thing for you. You can create anything for the next moment. But the precaution which you're going to take is, first of all, there is a limitation for AI. The moment you're going to just make up the like, next move is going to have a blast. Always going to have a blast. Is the internet working? Oh. I will just share a video with you. In that video, which we have, like, me, me just shooted a few months back, in 
Ghaziabad, there is a college which has invested 30 crore rupees for the research and development department. So I'm seriously happy in India as people are spending so much. They have shown in that video two phases of AI. AI is learning from the environment and making up the humans, okay, grow. But in the second phase, it is leaving the humans behind and more surprising it. You see the example of Sophia, the robot which have got the citizenship right now. So basically the robot, if you say the robot, I will slap you. The robot will not say like, okay, don't slap me. That It will say like, I will slap you back. And her answer for like, what do you want to do in the future? Her answer is truly amazing. I want to create a robotics world. I want to create my own generation. If you, that, that's what is happening. I was, I was in Dubai a few days back in Knowledge, Knowledge Summit. In that, the AI minister, which has been appointed recently, Mohammed, he came over there and he told about that. If we don't have regulation for it, the moment you, amount of energy you are using for this, and there is no regulation for it, you next moment you can, you can create anything. You can create an army for yourself, which is going to be like, a, it's not a defensive army. It's going to be like a self means anti-defensive army, which you will create in, at the border's end. So that's why a terrorist organization, you will see most of the hackers are from Pakistan. And that's true story. I have been to Pakistan, Karachi. So I've seen people hacking up the live time. You're showing something, they will hack at the real time phase. That's what the problem is. So we need to be precautions. That is European law of society, robotics law of society is coming up with AI's laws. So there will be several number of laws which is going to be made up in the future so that you can have the limitation, you can work. But I don't want laws right now because we have not grown up right now. So we need to grow as a product. You will not find a big AI product coming up right now. It's a big hype. Honestly, I'm telling you, AI, a technical guy, AI is more of a hype right now. But the problem is people are thinking that's a wow, wow. In India, Bangalore startup got like $8 million funding from Google. And that startup does, does only have a name. Only have a name, not a single kind of paper has been published from them. Why? Because they are doing AI. How many people do AI in India? That's how the problem is because real time phase when you do the coding and all that stuff you want to show to everyone, that is zero. So that's what we have to take up the regulation for some people, but not for everyone because the laws are made for everyone. So there is, we need to think of that. And the question. Uh, so, so such a wonderful audience I have. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you so much for being an awesome audience and clapping.